Yeah. 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 Fine. Whatever. Yeah. Fine. See you later. Bye. Steve. He's not coming, mate. No, he's busy or whatever. I, I don't know. He's not coming. We're going to have to get someone else in. Probably Josh. No, no, no. Don't worry about ringing him. I'll, I'll get him. Yeah. Here. Are you doing this again? Well, you know, Sticks isn't here this week, so we need someone to get in. So, you know, put your bowl and your, everything down. Get your shirt on. You, you, got, you got a spare t-shirt? I could have a spare t-shirt. Welcome to Rock and Roll Nerds. <laughs>Hi guys, welcome to Rock and Roll Nerds. As you can see, I'm still coming off a bit of a cold, so once again I don't have alcohol. But uh, Josh Jones is here. I am here. Yes. yes. With alcohol. With I'm alcohol. I'm not ill yet. Yeah. I don't. Not yet. Yeah. We'll be careful. But uh, yes, so welcome to another episode of Dick Dick. We do Dick Dick. Yes. So first, what we have is some new news. New news. New news. We've got some new news. Uh, not old news. New, new news. news. Um, they've decided to do a Supergirl TV show, and they've cast uh, Melissa... Is it Ben... Ben what? Or Ben... ben uh, it has an S in it, so it's like Benoist. 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 Like I think it's Melissa Benoist. Uh, we would say, if you know how to pronounce it, comment below, but we'd just be reading it again. Yeah. So we, we, <laughs> yeah, it makes we, no uh, sense. If you want to phone us up, yeah. maybe be like yes. So yeah, they cast her, and they've like given us like a... a Full spread picture of the mm -hmm. suit and everything. A lot of people don't like it. Well, he looks pretty standard. Yeah. Pretty super girl esque. Uh, we do our research. Well, oh, I do. Six though. That's why he's not here. Um, yeah, it seemed that a lot of people were a bit bothered by, um, I suppose, the image of Supergirl. I see it. She looks all right. Yeah. They're just making it their own thing. Yeah, it's classic Supergirl. Uh, yeah, it's. She's very. I don't want to say underrated. She. Well, she is underrated. But she's always going to be in the minor leagues compared to Superman and Batman. But people are still interested. Yeah, I think it's good that they're doing it. No, yeah, I'd probably watch it. Is it a Netflix thing? Or I'm not sure whether it's a Netflix thing or whether it's TV. a proper TV show. I'm not too sure. I haven't found out yet. But I'm still quite happy they're doing it because I think, again, it's now's the right time to do this kind of stuff. And Yeah, it seems every other month now it's like, right, they're giving us this superhero thing. It's going well. So what we'll do we, another one. Yeah, what yeah. else can we do? Yeah, but yeah. yeah it's, I'm like again, I, I don't know whether it's DC boys have the same way they keep the TV and the film separate. Mm -hmm. But her costume does look. It does have kind of harks to the Man of Steel Superman type suit. Yeah, I don't know whether they're actually going to use it and combine them, which I don't think they will. But it still has that kind of flavour. Yeah, they're it? keeping it as like so they're doing their own thing with it, but it's still very much Superman. You know. Oh, well, I'm not going to say base, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, uh, yeah it's keeping to the, the style of Superman. Yeah. Like, I, I can't remember the actual power now, but she might have her underwear over the top of the costume. I don't know, she has a skirt, doesn't she? Oh, yeah, she does, yeah. Well, under, we, before we yeah. know, you know. Well, she would have Could underwear. Could be going to commando, yeah, That'd be cool, <laughs> that'd get viewers in. But yes, looking forward to it, it looks like it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, it'd be cool. Right guys, it's on to the local act portion of our show this week, and uh, Josh is going to tell you what's going on locally. Mm -hmm, that's what my job is today, or this week, or whatever. First one up is a band called Filthy Monkey, and I like that already. Mm. I don't even care what kind of music they do, I like them already. Uh, that'll be on Friday the 20th of March in Coventry at Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Yes. Roadhouse. Family Guy reference, get it. Um, you probably know more about what kind of band they are than I do. I don't even know. Oh, we don't know. Not a clue. Well, it's his job. <laughs> yeah, we're just the messengers. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys, if you know about them, comment below. That's your job. Um, then again, our job is meant to tell you what these bands <laughs> are like. But, you <laughs> know, know. we're telling you there's a gig on. Yeah, go so see. So if you're in commentary or around that time or whatever, and or even if you just like the name Roadhouse or Filthy Monkey. Yeah, they're playing Friday the 20th of March, so... Uh, I don't know what day you watch this, but it's Sunday the 15th now. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, this coming Friday. Monday. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the coming Friday, Roadhouse, Filthy Monkey, see what they're like. Um, next one is in our hometown of Rugby at the Vault. It's the Glass Jar Collective on Saturday the 21st of March. Um, I went briefly to the last one they did, so it's very... I don't know if it's open mic or just they get acoustic acts in. I think they just get loads of acoustic acts in. Yeah. I think. Well, yeah. Well, 
it was, uh, you know, quite impressive. Uh, it's pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. There's glass jars everywhere. They put, uh, is it fairy lights? It's fairy lights, like yeah. jar lights. Yeah, yeah, they put fairy lights everywhere, so it has a great effect. Um, yeah, it's. We're not, we're going to stick to the gig, but the vault are expanding their horizons. They're doing all these loads of different things. Yeah, and this is a good one. It's. Uh, it feels like a more intimate gig. Yeah, it's one of them where if you don't want to go clubbing and all that, if you just want to listen to di gentle music, I suppose, yeah. they do that before the actual club night. So you want to rock hard, go to the nightclub part afterwards. If you don't, go and you know, have a few beverages and listen to some acoustic stuff at the Glass Jar Collective. Ha! Huh. Local acts! <laughs> Next up is Slipknot Bass News and... Not good, not bad news, just new news. Mick Thompson, the guitarist, has been stabbed in the back of the head. But by his brother. By, by his brother. Yeah, sibling rivalries. But he's well, for what we know. I, I don't know if he's in hospital still, or if he's been released. And I don't know if it's affecting Slipknot tour dates. But as far as we know, he's okay. You know, it's apart from the hole in the back of his head. Um, so yeah, all I've heard is that he got really drunk with his brother. I don't know, I know they got in a fight, I don't know if it was just like, uh, we're drunk, let's have a play fight, or they got drunk, and had an argument, and were kicking the crap out of each other. I think it started inside the house, then went to the front garden, yeah. the knives came out, for some bizarre reason. As you do. Yeah, it's like, oh well, I'm not winning the fight, I'll get a knife. Um, and stabbed Mick in the back of the head. I think his brother also got stabbed in the process as well, but... Yeah, just another bizarre, unorthodox story from the Slipknot camp. Um, but very different sized brothers, so I can... I, I don't know, he didn't try kill him. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing. It was just out of control. Still, I wouldn't talk to my brother again if he did that. No. I mean, well, don't talk to me. Or it'd be like, you, you stab know, me, go away. You, you're paying my medical bills. <laughs> yeah, least, you know. you're paying my med bills. So, yeah, as far as I know, he's okay. Uh, he's still alive, mm. and Slipknot's tour dates are still on, wherever they are now, they're somewhere around the world, obviously. Um, so yeah, Mick stabbed, but okay. Get well soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, guys, some more news from the Marvel camp, and Mr. Mason, who is sat here, is going to tell you all about it. More Marvel news, which I'm always happy about. Uh, Marvel Studios and Disney and everyone have basically confirmed that Hawkeye will officially be in Captain America Civil War. Mm. Which is pretty awesome. There was rumours about he might be in, he might not be in, because he was meant to be in The Winter Soldier, and they cut, they cut his scene out. Oh. They basically said, because they didn't want to overcrowd it and everything, it wasn't a scene that was necessarily It wasn't an Avengers film. So yeah, it's like, but it's yeah. the thing, Civil War's becoming like Avengers 2.0. You've got oh, yeah. Falcon in it, you've got Hawkeye in it, you've got Iron Man, Captain America, Black Widow, potentially Spider-Man. It's just, oh, yeah, it's yeah. like, it is basically like an Avengers film, bar a couple of. Yeah. But yeah, it's good, I'm glad that Hawkeye's in it, because a long time for a long time now people have been saying underrated. someone yeah underrated character but someone is going to die in Ultron and everybody was pointing the finger at Hawkeye the fact that he's in Civil War means at the end and I'm fine with that because I yeah. want his character to develop I need I need to see him because I like it I like Hawkeye well, yeah, he's it's, a cool character I'm not as in sync with Marvel as you so was Spider-Man ever in the Avengers team no Right. Well, in the comics it was. But well, that, that, well, I mean, yeah. now that they've got the rights to him, do you think they'd kill one off to put, replace them? I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's just Josh Whedon's just kind he's of... He's doing his own he, thing. Yeah, but he's kind of renowned for killing off main characters, which is why we were thinking... Yeah, it's pretty obvious that it probably won't be... You're not going to kill one of the main four which have got their own franchises. Yeah. So it's either going to be Hawkeye or Black Widow. And I don't think it's going to be Black Widow because she's the female. Yeah. If that makes sense. You know I mean, they're not going to kill up a, a strong female role. Well, they, the way they could go for the Age of Ultron, I suppose, is they might kill off Quicksilver, even yeah. though he'd only be in the one film. Could do. Yeah, but I, I, I kind of got a theory. I, you know, spoiler alert, it's, it's just a theory, right, so this isn't true. Well, no, really no. I think that War Machine is going to die. Brody. Yeah. Because if you look at all three trailers, he's only in at the start when he's trying to lift the hammer with Iron Man, and then he's not in the rest of any of the trailers. I think when Ultron attacks Avengers Tower the first first time, he takes it, him out. He takes him out and he ends up killing him. Yeah. The, the, I think because because you don't really need him. There's not any new Iron Man films on the horizon. You won't need him in Civil War. You don't necessarily need him in the Avengers film. He's kind of a character that has run its course. He's played, yeah, he's played his part. Yeah. So I'm thinking Josh Whedon's the kind of guy. Get right. He's he's getting a Game of Thrones me mentality. He's like right. He's run its course. Kill him. 
Yeah, and I think that's potentially what will happen. It, I think War Machine's going to die. It is one of those things where, with what I've seen in the trailer, like, even in the face of danger, I suppose, Tony's always had this kind of cocky confidence about it. Even yeah. when Whiplash kicked his ass, he's there like, well, you, you know, I beat you, so screw you. Yeah. Uh, but in the trailer when yeah, he's just uh, talking about what the Ultron program was and what he's done, he genuinely seems almost like spiritually defeated. Yeah. And a good reason for that could be that his best friend... Just been killed. Yeah. And, you know, and he's pissed everybody off. He's so pretty yeah, much done it in the world. But, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, it's just a theory. But yeah. yeah, Hawkeye, Civil War, we're really happy that he's in it because I'd like to see more development of this character. Should be fun. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right, guys, we've got some uh, new trailer that came out this week. Uh, they brought out the second Game of Thrones Season 5 trailer. Um, to be honest, it didn't show much more than the first one. It's shorter. It did show some new scenes and everything. It showed some more cooler pieces that... that develop more onto the story but as a second trailer it didn't really show much it, it compared showed, to the first one because the first one showed a lot more it was good two minutes long i'm speaking <clears throat> as a guy outside of the box here because i'm the guy that doesn't watch it I, i'm known as the wrestling guy i'm probably the only guy who doesn't watch game of thrones I, people said i should but yeah. i have a busy lifestyle um yeah as, so as a outside fan it was the whole yeah, I wasn't getting with the characters were anyway. It looked cool. It looked like it was going to be a good season. Mm. Uh, but like you said, it seemed to be more focusing on we'll, we'll give them the cool lines to get them hyped up kind of thing. Like yeah. the whole yeah, the that's... spoke on a wheel and she's like, I will destroy the wheel. Yeah. Kind of thing. That was like, yeah, it, it's on kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to it. I always look forward to it. It's just that for a second trailer, it didn't do anything for me. Yeah, I got confused because uh, this can't be spoiler alerts and stuff again, but. Uh, who's the dwarf guy? Tyrion. Yeah, I was under the impression that he died. No, 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 no. See, this is why I this don't is, know. This is one of the characters that we don't think will die until right at the very end because he's George R. R. Martin's favourite character. Right, and what about the blonde king? I thought he died as well. He, or was well, it someone who's just. Yeah. Yeah, he's dead. But there was a, a guy who was like almost a spitting image of him in the trailer. Oh, it's his brother. Oh, right. Tommy, uh, his brother. Yeah. See, this is what I don't know. But this is what this trailer shows. Yeah, you know, it can, if people don't know as much as I do, you know, a bit, you will confuse and go, well, I've got to watch that to see what's going on. Yeah, what the fuck's happening here? And it's, um, if the midget will die. Yeah, like I said, go watch the trailer. It's still pretty awesome. It's just, as the second trailer just didn't show as much as it should have done, I think. I think they should have shown more new scenes. But, but again, it's a good thing. It's, it's, yeah, they're not it, showing the best part. Yeah, they're, not, they're keeping so close to their chest, which mm. is fair enough, I understand that. So, yeah. Check it out. We'll be on to our main topic in a minute, but first, a word from our sponsor. our main topic for this week. Um, some lovely news that dropped on Friday, I think it was. Um, Disney and Star Wars have announced their first title for their Star Wars spin-off film. And it's called Star Wars Rogue One, which is going to be awesome. Yeah, Star Wars rules anyway. Yeah, it's going to be kick-ass anyway. Um, the only thing that's a little shocked me about is that for ages, the main topic of conversation for spin-offs was a bounty hunter film. Mm. And... 
they were honestly talking about the bounty of Dakota and Mandalorians and that kind of stuff, and that's what was going to happen. Then this comes out, and you think, well, it's going to be about the Rogue Squadron then, isn't it? Yeah. But I think you... Just because it's called Rogue One doesn't mean it won't be about the bounty hunters. It could be the Rogue Squadron versus the bounty hunters. It could be melded into one film. Yeah. Well, but still. Well, what I'm... I've heard, I mean, yeah, like, straight away, when I heard Rogue One, Rogue Squadron wasn't the first thing that came to my came mind. The first thing came to my head. Yeah, that, it wasn't until I really thought about it. Like, oh, of course, ro like, ro Red 5, Rogue Squadron, yeah. yeah. But I just thought, right, Rogue as in a loner. This would... So it could be the bounty hunter one. Um... Because I think one of the other uh, plotline rumours were it's set between three and four. Yeah. And one of the bounty hunters or somebody nicks the plans to the Death Star during its building kind of thing. Yeah, they always say it's going to be a bounty hunter that does that. Yeah. But of all we know, because there was that bit uh, in Attack of the Clones, did Dooku have the plans? Yes. Yeah. I wasn't sure if he gave that to another... What were those bug thing calls? Dinosians. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't sure if he gave the plans to one of them to say, oh, deliver that to the Empire kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, but I don't think he did. No, I think he had them himself, didn't he? But yeah, it, it, it is kind of all things directing at Rogue Squadron. Yeah, which I'm cool with, because I think it's going to... It'd be an interesting twist yeah, to the Star Wars franchise. Yeah, to see how the Rogue Squadron came into being, because you got the point from episode 3 to 4, where you don't know... How the Rogue Squadron became this elite force, yeah, and yeah. how they were part of the rebellion. Yeah, you just presume they were part yeah, of the, you get the Air part, Force of the yeah, rebellion. You get kind of an inkling in the Force of these games, but as they've obviously stated, the Force of these is not canon, mm. so they can do whatever they want with that period of time. They're doing it with Rebels, where between three and four, that's canon. So they're going to do this with a film where they can say this is how the rebellion was formed, and this is how Rogue Squadron became. A thing, thing, yeah. So, so they can easily have the bounty hunters as the villains. They can yeah. easily do that. Someone said uh, on my research that uh, I don't watch Star Wars Rebels. I'm aware of it, but I watch said, it on and off. Yeah, they said there was something that that was happening in it to do with the squadron that could build up to. Yeah, I heard that that's that's potentially the case. Yeah, because well. didn't they all start off like just like a load of random pilots as a kind of like. Not pirates as such, but like a cluster of pilots that would smugglers. be vigilantes. Yeah, like smugglers type yeah. people. Yeah. And I think the main character is going to be, um, I don't know her name and I can't put a face to her, but she was the female part in The Theory of Everything. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yes. Uh, Felicity, is it Felicity something? I can't, I can't remember. remember. She was in Theory of Everything. If you know, yeah. comment, comment below. below. Yeah, she's got the main role. So. Which would be cool. Yeah, it'd be interesting if she's the rogue one as like. Just taking lead yeah, of these pilots and leading them to the Rogue Squadron. Yeah, because that would be know. cool, because that would be good to have a, a solid woman role. Now, I know that Star Wars has had solid woman roles in Padme, and Leia, Leia and, Mar and Mar Mothma, but that's not... Mar Mothma that, wasn't really solid. Not solid, no, but she was part of the Rebel Alliance. Yeah. And it's kind of like, yeah, they were strong characters, but that's literally like the only three women you ever see. Mm. So uh, the fact that they're potentially having the main focus of her as the main character, like the Luke Skywalker of this film, yeah, is a good thing. I think that's good because we need more women in this universe. It, it seemed with the... Uh, yeah, I'm not taking anything away from Natalie Portman or the Padme character at all, but it seemed that uh, round the end of Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace that Padme would only resort to violence or, or action, I suppose, if there was no other, yeah. you know, uh, she more way. Diplomatic, wasn't yeah, Leah was always like, let's go and kick some ass. If we have another character like that, that's like, right, we're going to turn it into the Rogue Squadron, but I'm going to lead you in a kind of formation as yeah. a kind of a, a target, and, you yeah, know, we will be... It's almost going to be like a Star Wars Top Gun thing. If, yeah. If it, if, it, if it is yeah. to do with that, this. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good... What thing to put to it? It's going to be yeah. kind of like Top Gun, but Star Wars is it's and it's so of, different. Yeah, and it's cool because it, for for the first time ever, we're not focusing on the Skywalker. We're not family. focusing on lightsabers or anything like I that. I mean, there could be lightsabers in it, but it won't be the main focus. You know what I mean? The Skywalker family will not be the main focus of this film, and mm. I think that's good because it, it, Star Wars is such a big universe. So why can't we expand on characters we don't know? Yeah, you know what I mean, I if they wanted thing. to, I mean, they're going to do another spin-off as well. They, they? I think they're doing three altogether. So maybe Han, maybe Han Yoda. Solo. I, if they do a Yoda one, I'll be disappointed. I don't need to know that guy's origin. I, it's part of the mysticalness and the mystery of that character, not knowing what creature he is, not knowing where he came from, and not knowing his origin. I don't Isn't that the same with Han, though, to know who's a smuggler? No, Han I'm alright with, because we've kind of got a bit of a backstory on him anyway. 
We know he's a humanoid. We know he was a smuggler. We know he had business with Boba Fett. We know he had problems with Jabba as well. So we know that kind of stuff. So I'd like to see that. Yeah, but Yoda is this mystical Jedi Grandmaster, and I don't want to know where he came from. I'm happy not knowing. Yeah. Because it, 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 it's kind of like I said to Sticks a while back on Rock and Roll Nerds that it's kind of like finding out the Doctor's name. You don't yeah. want to find it out because it kind of ruins it. His name's Jim. It's just yeah. like, oh, well, that's yeah. Shit. It's like a magician revealing his tricks. Exactly, kind of and thing. I don't think that you should do that with certain characters. And Yoda's one of them. Yeah, I remember. I think you've said a couple of times with Han, it would hopefully touch on the castle run. Yeah, because, oh, that'd be good if it did. If, if, the thing with Star Wars, like every line is pretty much known by Star Wars geeks, so it is never ignored. So. Yeah, you know, as soon as Luke said uh, to when I was talking to Ben in the first one, like you were part of the Clone Wars, people, fans were automatically like, "Yeah, what well, is this Clone Wars?" Yeah, exactly. And, and now it's like Kessel Run. What's this Kessel Run? Yeah, I want to know. And we want to know, like you said, what it is with him and Boba. Yeah. Because I was when they shown the origin of Boba in Attack of the Clones, I was happy about that. It was a surprise I wasn't expecting. I was fine. The only problem was it was shit out to do the kid thing. Yeah, but it, it was good to know. Up. Where Boba came from. Yeah, the fact that he's not actually a genuine human, he's a clone. Yeah, an unaltered clone. An unaltered yeah. clone. Which yeah. Is, it's cool. I because like well, I think you said there is a story, I don't know if it's part of Clone Wars or Rebels, of Boba looking revenge for revenge against Mace. Yeah, he did on the Clone Wars, he tried to kill him with a load of the bounty hunters. Yeah, it's cool. But um, if they'd said, right, we're not for the next spin off, we're not doing a hand, we're not doing Yoda, if they suddenly went, we're going to do on exactly where Django came from. Because by the sounds of it, Django isn't a reg uh, is it Camino? Yeah, he's not Camino, he's a Mandalorian. Yeah, it's like it'd be good to know like what you know his backstory, why he decided to get into bounty hunting, yeah. and maybe even uh, I suppose maybe the development of the armor or how he trained himself or who trained to be pretty yeah. much the most badass. I, 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 I think it's I think it's that's basically like a Mandalorian backstory because the Mandalorians were born to fight. Yeah, because Boba was never Mandalorian. trained because yeah. his dad died. He just had it in his blood. Yeah. To be a badass bounty hunter. But so, to, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Rogue One. Back to, back to Rogue One. See, this is where we we, we snowball. It's Star Wars. It yeah. still counts. But yeah, Rogue One. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. It's coming between Episode Seven and Episode Eight. It will come out between them. So we're basically yeah. as soon as Episode Seven hits, we're going to be getting a Star Wars film every single year. Yeah, I'm which guessing. Is awesome. Oh well, they, they started filming Rogue One then. They will start filming it soon. So are we expecting? I'm probably expecting an early 2017 release. Probably not 2016. I say I, I'm going for May. I think like not 2016 or 17. Well, 16, because it's every year. Star Wars Episode Seven comes out this year. Then it'll be a spin off. It, it, then eight. It, then a spin off. Then nine. It's every year. So I think because it's a smaller film, it's a smaller budget film compared to the big ones, it's quicker and easier to do. Possibly. I'm just thinking. Uh, the one they're going to push. Uh, Force Awakens is summer release, or they're still speculating on that. Still speculating. But if Force Awakens is released originally, like it is meant to be at Christmas, and then Rogue One in May, it might seem just a bit too rushed to have a Star Wars film yeah, that po quick. Possibly, but one. I'm still fine with it. I'm fine with it. It just we might take away the excitement and the. It's kind of like going. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Iron Man three just come out, but Avengers comes out next month as well. Yeah, true. Really uh, which didn't happen, but or did it? No, Iron Man three was after Avengers. Yeah. But well, yeah, whatever. Rogue One, Force Awakens, Star Wars, awesome. just I'm Star Wars. Looking forward to it. So anything Star Wars, just like yes, please bring us more. Yeah, because we're happy about this. I know George is probably part of it somehow. He's a creative consultant. Yeah, so we know it's it. not gonna. Even you know, I'm happy what what Disney did with Pirates of the Caribbean, but everyone's still a bit. Disney, Star Wars, come on. I'm fine. It will be weird to it see that fun. Disney logo go like that. I don't think they'll do that. I hope they don't do that. Where it's a lightsaber. Yeah. I'll be happy with that. that. That'll be fine. That's, that's fine. We'll do that. That's fine. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much all we've got to say. Main, that's our main topic. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, put your comments down, let me know what you thought. Um, also, just find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter. Uh, I apologise for still having a cold. And <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, and I apologise that Sticks was not here again. I'm not. I'm happy I'm here. But we've got Josh to come and help us this week. Josh, the wrestling guy, Jones. Yes. You, you will see me again at the WrestleMania one. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see you next week. Mm. Cheers. Play. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching. Please remember, if you like that, don't forget to like and subscribe down at the bottom there. Also, if you want to see another chit chat, click here. If you want to see another top ten or review, click here. And also, have a look for us on Facebook. Thanks, guys.